Hello everyone, the topic of this video is clock arithmetic. You are already familiar with this type of arithmetic, so hopefully this will be a fun way to study an example of a math system. Uh, if you do enjoy this, you could continue on and uh, this would lead into a study of number theory and eventually you could learn about um, cri cryptography and codes among other applications. Okay, so first of all, addition on the 12 hour clock. Um, we need to define what we mean by this type of addition and notice that this is something that you're you're actually comfortable with a weird type of addition uh, for instance you know 7 plus 6 or, or let's do 7 plus 8 first on a clock and you know you're used to the idea that this actually is not 15 um, as with normal addition so on a clock you think of 7 plus 8 as uh, perhaps starting at 7 o'clock that that might be the time now and then counting eight hours into the future. Okay, so that corresponds to counting clockwise on a clock. All right, so seven plus eight, seven o'clock plus eight hours is actually three o'clock. So we would say that seven plus eight is three. All right, um, nine plus 12, for example, this one, right, if it's nine o'clock and you count 12 hours into the future, then that brings you back to 9 o'clock. It just switches from, you know, between a.m. and p.m. All right. Um, if you think you have the hang of this, maybe pause the video, try these other four examples, and see what you get as an answer. Okay, um, 7 plus 6. Okay, on a clock, this is 1. Right, 6 plus 11 is 5. 8 plus 7 is 3 and 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, so you have a starting time and then you're moving or counting a certain number of hours um, beyond that. If we made an operation table for this addition, okay, we could list out all of the different times that are possible here on the left, and then we could count forward right, by this many hours. All right. um, now notice you do have the, kind of a switch over right at this point, it's kind of normal addition up to there, and then everything switches over if you get to a number that's too high that's not on a clock. All right, multiplication. Now this one you may not actually use um, or have used in real life, but uh, this does have um, a real meaning as well. Okay, so five times three, uh, we could think of this in terms of repeated addition, right? So the you might not remember this perhaps from elementary school, but uh, the first number in a multiplication could be thought of as how many times you're adding the second number. Okay, so the three is what's being added. The five tells you how many times, hence five times three. Okay. Or similarly, four times seven means add seven to itself four times. Right. So clock multiplication um, would refer to kind of just counting ahead repeatedly a certain number of hours. All right, so five times three in clock multiplication, uh, we start at 12 o'clock, that's kind of your, your base starting time, right? And then you would count around the clock in three hour portions five times, okay? So 12 plus three is three o'clock, three plus three hours is six o'clock, right, et cetera, counting by threes, and you end up at three o'clock, right? So five times three is three plus three plus three plus three plus three, Right, or, or five times, and that equals three. All right, let's try a couple more examples. Six times five. Okay, it's five added to itself six times. So think about starting at 12 o'clock and moving five hours ahead each time. Okay, so 12 plus 5 would be, okay, 17 or, you know, in clock arithmetic, starting at noon and counting ahead 5 hours, that's 5 okay, p.m. Then 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 o'clock, count ahead 5 hours is 3. 3, count ahead 5 hours is 8. And eight, count ahead, whoops, five hours. Okay, it would be one. All right, and 
that's one, two, three, four, five. So we need one more. One plus five is six. All right, so in other words, if you start at 12 o'clock, add five hours six times, you end up at six o'clock. Okay, equals six o'clock. All right, let's try three times 11. And if you want, pause this, see if you can do this on your own. Okay, so this is 11 added three times. Okay, so start at 12, add 11, brings you to 11. 11 o'clock plus 11 hours is 10. And 10 plus 11, okay, so count ahead 10 plus 2 would be 12, and then you need to go 9 more hours, so that's 9 o'clock. Okay, so 3 times 11 is 9. All right, now, um, this is a little bit tedious to do it this way, and you can think about, you know, perhaps a longer problem. Let's say we had um, 43 times 7. Okay, so that would be 7 added to itself 43 times, right? And that's, you know, too tedious to do this way um, on a clock, right? So we instead, we're, we're going to start to switch over and look at a, a different, perhaps better way to do multiplication on a clock. All right, so one fact that we're using is the fact that any 12 unit rotation on the clock puts you back where you started, right? So if you start at three o'clock and you add 12, okay, you're gonna end up at three o'clock. Now a.m. and p.m. switch, but it's still the same um, numerical time, right? Or 11 o'clock plus 12 hours is still an 11 o'clock. All right, so let's look at converting um, 43 into the 12 hour clock system. So it's not in the system because it's not in the set of numbers um, 1, 2, 3, 4, et cetera, all the way up to 12. Okay, so we wanna make it one of those numbers. All right, so notice, um, let's say that we were, you know, 43 is part of a problem, like maybe we want to add 43 to one of our times. Well, if we break that down and look at 43 as a series of 12 unit rotations plus a little bit extra, um, then that makes it easier to, to think of, right? So, you know, let's start with maybe five o'clock and add 43, right? And then notice that 43 is really 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus seven, okay? So 12 times 3 is 36, plus 7 is 43. All right, so notice that adding each of these 12s, 5 plus 12 is still 5. Okay, and then if you add 12 hours again, you're still at 5. And then if you add 12 hours again, you're still at 5. And then you have one final um, addition to do 5 plus 7 is 12 o'clock, right? So in other words, these three 12s really didn't make any difference in this problem at all. We would have gotten the same answer if we had just added five plus seven. All right, so to convert, um, we want to basically just think of 43 as however many uh, units are left over after you take away as many 12s as possible, right? And essentially this is like a division you're repeatedly subtracting 12s or seeing how many groups of 12 are in 43. Okay, so, um, so option one, to convert a number, repeatedly subtract 12 as many times as possible until you get an answer that is um, less than 12. Okay, or option two, Okay, divide 43 by 12, and then look at the remainder. Okay, so let me pull up a calculator, and let's see. Okay, so let's say you do this on a calculator, 43 divided by 12, and I'm seeing 
3.583333 repeating. Okay, so go back to um, this idea of what a decimal is. That's like a fractional part, um, a group of 12, or, you know, the three is how many whole groups of 12 are in 43, and then the remainder is what portion of a group of 12 is left over. So it may be 1 or 11 or 6, but it's something less than 12. All right. So we have a couple ways to, to convert this remainder part to a whole number. Um, first of all, if you see that there are three groups of 12 and 43, okay, then just subtract 43 minus three groups of 12, and that gives you the remainder. That gives you 7. Right. Now your other option, do this one on a calculator, um, leave this decimal number you know, on your display, Okay, then subtract away the whole number part, so then minus 3 in this case, all right, so just whatever's before the decimal, minus 3, okay, and then you get this repeating okay, decimal 3 through 3, all right? Now that represents a fraction of 12, so if you multiply it by 12, that would tell you what fraction of 12 it is, okay? So multiply that, dot, 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 okay, as many digits as your calculator will display, times 12, and then usually what happens is you might get something close to 7, like 6.999, something due to rounding, okay, but then you would just round that, right, whatever that is, that rounds to 7, all right. All right, so let's try it out with, with um, 58. I've got two examples here. All right, so option one, 58, subtract away as many 12s as possible, dot, 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 okay? So, you know, think of multiples of 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. So it looks like the biggest multiple of 12 that we can subtract is 12 times 4, okay? And that leaves you with a remainder of 10. All right, option two, 58 divided by 12, all right, on a calculator I have 4.8 and a bunch of repeating threes. Okay, so that could also tell you to subtract four groups of 12 and see that 10 is left, all right, or subtract four, so do point, let's see, 4.8333, whatever's on your calculator, subtract four, Get just the decimal part, oops, okay, and then multiply that by 12. All right, and that should give you um, a number that's very close to 10, and then you can round to get that whole number remainder of 10. All right, if you want, pause here, try this out on 36. Okay, I think this one's a little bit easier, though. Okay, so 36, subtract as many 12s as possible. Well, 36 is a multiple of 12. You can subtract it three times and that leaves you with zero. Okay, or if you do 36 divided by 12, that's three. Okay, and then there is no, there is no decimal remainder after that. All right, so we have to do something with this zero because zero is not in the 12 hour clock system. That's not a time that you see on a clock. Um, but we're going to say that 0 corresponds to the 12, right, because, um, you know, if you, if you add 0 hours to a time, that's the same time will display as if you add 12 hours to it, all right? So anytime you see a 0 in this system, we're going to say that that equals 12. And I know that that looks weird to have 0 equals 12, but in this system, uh, that's true. All right, so let's look at how this would work for a multiplication problem to make this easier. All right, so now your, your shortcut, all right, we found five times three is three, counting ahead by three hours five times. Okay, now here's your shortcut. Just multiply as normal, three times, or five times three is 15, and I switched to a normal multiplication symbol just to emphasize that this is not clock multiplication. All right, and that's 15, and then just convert to the 12 hour clock system. So see what the remainder is when you divide by 12 or subtract as many 12s as possible and see what's left. All right, so 15 is 12 plus three. 
and there's your remainder. So that would also tell you that 5 times 3 is, is 3. All right, let's practice. Okay, um, 5 times 8 is 40. Okay, I can subtract 3 groups of 12 or 36, and that leaves me with 4. Okay, so 5 times 8 in clock multiplication is actually 4. All right, pause if you want, try the other ones, and then um, when you come back, we can go over the answers. Okay, 12 times 9. Okay, that's in normal, normal multiplication, that would be 108. Okay, and 108 is divisible by 12. Okay, dot, 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 that's a remainder of 0, and we said that 0 corresponds to 12. All right, so that equals 12. Um, now notice right away, if you see that this is 9 times 12, we know right away that that's going to be a multiple of 12. So right away, um, that is going to just give you an answer of 12. Um, if you wanted to convince yourself of this, all right, this means add 9 to itself 12 times. All right, so think about starting at 12, add 9, add 9, add 9, add 9, okay, 12 times, and then just see where you end up. All right, 6 times 4 is 24 in normal multiplication, and that is also a multiple of 12. Or in other words, when you divide it, you get 2 remainder 0. 0 corresponds to 12, so that also equals 12. Okay. 11 times 5. In real numbers, that would be 55. Okay, And then look at how many multiples of 12 you can subtract. Okay, so I can take away, uh, let's see, 24, 36, 48, and 55 minus 48 is 7. Okay, that is a number in, um, in this system. Alright, so that's a good answer, 7. And then 10 times 6 plus 9. Okay, so in clock addition, let's see, 6 plus 9 is 15, but in clock addition, we said that 15 was actually 3. All right, and 10 times 3 is 30. All right, and then, then we can subtract 12 two times. Okay, or subtract 24, and that leaves you with 6. All right, similarly, if you did 30 divided by 12, okay, you're going to get 2.5 and then multiply the remainder part as a decimal, 0.5 times 12, and then that gives you 6. All right, so uh, the addition should look still fairly similar because, you know, if you had 6 o'clock plus 9 hours, you may even do that and, and think in your head 15 and then realize that, okay, for 15 it, as a time, it's, it's 12 o'clock and then 3 hours past that. Right. Uh, military time is another example of sort of a different clock system, but there you would keep going all the way up to, um, to 2400 as your, your last hour. All right, here's an operation table for multiplication. Okay, and so everything looks, you know, good at first up to a, a certain extent, I think. Let's see. Um, I want to say this stops right around here. So somewhere around here, um, all right, looks similar to a normal multiplication table. And then from there, we switch over um, to clock numbers. Okay, so you know, here's an example, 10 times 10. If you follow that down and across, it's actually 4. All right, so 10 times 10 is 100. And if you, okay, subtract as many 12s as possible, well, the nearest multiple of 12 is 96, and then that leaves you with a remainder of 4. Okay, so in other words, um, counting ahead 100 hours is the same thing as counting in groups of 12. You're just going to go around and around and around, okay, and then 4 extra hours. Okay, subtraction on the 12-hour clock. Um, this is performed by counting counterclockwise, going backward. So, for example, 8 minus 10 means it's 8 o'clock now, and then what time was it 10 hours ago? So backtracking 
Okay, and 10 hours ago it was 10 o'clock. So 8 minus 10 is 10. All right. Now we have used the same symbol here, like a subtraction symbol, but you're, you're just going to need to look at the context to know that this is clock subtraction and not normal subtraction. All right, so you should always get an answer um, between 1 and 12, and, and between and including 1 and 12. All right, um, try it out with a couple other ones. So 2 minus 10 means it's 2 o'clock now. Count backwards 10 hours, and you should see that you end up at 4 o'clock. Okay, um, pause, try the other four, and then I'll give you the answers. Okay, 12 minus 7 is 5, 5 minus 9 is 8, 6 minus 12 is 6, and 4 minus 11 is 5. All right. Now notice this one, 6 minus 12 is 6. Okay, you can see that it's easy to back up 12 hours exactly. You end up at the same, um, the same time as you started with, just a different a.m. or p.m. All right, so that's kind of the basics of how you would do um, clock arithmetic, and then I'm going to stop the recording here, and then we'll pick up in a second video with uh, properties of the 12-hour clock system.